The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... If your nerves are steady enough, I'd like to be your guide into and through, we hope, a place and a time where things happen which we ordinarily think of as supernatural, where grisly events do not necessarily have their moment and go their way as time moves ahead, but may stay and stay and still stay. The home we enter first is not the sinister place I'm talking about. It's a well-appointed apartment, bright, cheerful, normal in every way, occupied by Ken Harris, who at this moment is reading a novel, and his wife, Martha, who is working on a needlepoint project. Well, now, who can that be at this time of night? Only one way to find out. Oh, couldn't have waited two more pages. I was about to find out who'd done it. <laughs> Oh, hello, Stu. Okay. Here, come on in. Let me take your coat. Uh, no, no, I, I can't stay. I just wanted to let you know that I've, I, I've been out to the lake. Uh, Shadow Lake? What on earth for? Well, the thing is, Ken, your cottage has been broken into, unless somebody you know is out there. Well, no, nobody, but what, what makes you think? I saw lights, and I, I saw a shadow move across the living room window. No question about it, Ken. There was somebody in your cottage. Our mystery drama, Return to Shadow Lake, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Fielden Farrington and stars Nat Polan and Joan Lovejoy. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Uncle Ben's Long Grain and Wild Rice. I'll be back shortly with Act One. When you come to think of it, there's something rather sad about a summer cottage in midwinter. Its purpose is negated. Its rooms, built to contain the sounds of pleasure, are silent. Its meaning has been stripped from it. It is empty. Or should be. But according to Stu Ralston, the summer cottage owned by Ken and Martha Harris out on Shadow Lake is not empty. And whoever is in it has no business there. You say you saw lights in the window, Stu? That's right. Well, but all the utilities have been turned off for the winter. There's no electricity. Well, we left a couple of, of hurricane lamps in the utility room, Ken. Couldn't somebody have found those? It was a dim light. It uh, could very well have been a lamp or even a couple of candles. Huh. Did you notice if there was a light in the utility room windows, too? Um, no, I, I don't think there was. A, all I was aware of was the light in the living room and, and the shadow of a man walking a, past the front window, or maybe a woman. I, I couldn't be sure. Stu, what on earth were you doing out there in the first place? Oh, I, I just thought I'd drive out, you, you know. Looking for Claudia. Did you actually think you'd find Claudia out there? No, 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 of course not. I, well, I, I suppose that was in the back of my mind, but I didn't really expect to find her. Uh, our cottage was empty. Stu, Claudia has been missing since... Well, it's almost a year now. Do you think it, it's healthy to keep on this way? <laughs> I haven't thought much about what's healthy and... What isn't, Martha? The, the police have Claudia listed as a missing person. Case closed. Well, that's all right for them. They, they weren't married to her. They didn't love her. I do. I can't just give her up that easily. But out at Shadow Lake, in the middle of winter? Well, she used to go there when she was upset about things. E even in the wintertime, she... She liked to be alone sometimes. Stu, I know it's a hard thing for you to believe, but don't you think it's, it's likely that Claudia just took off on her own? She was always restless. Claudia might have left me, yes. 
But she would never have gone without telling me she was going. No, I... I wouldn't have thought so. So, what does that leave? She was abducted. Maybe killed. I, I, I don't know. If she could, I believe she'd have got in touch with me by this time. I, I just... Well, I just wanted to let you know about the cottage. How about a brandy, Stu? No. No, no, thanks. I, uh, I have to get back to my place. Stu, don't let it just devour you this way. You're very sweet to be concerned, Martha. Uh, I'll be all right. Ken, will you come to bed? Are you going to spend the whole night roaming around worrying? Well, I'm disturbed about the cottage. I think I'll drive out there tomorrow. To Shadow Lake? Yeah. What in the world for? I want to see if any damage has been done. You know, just check up on things. Well, I think it's silly. You haven't been feeling too well. Uh, and I don't think going out there all upset would be any good for you. I'm all right. A drive into the country will do me good. Well, you don't have to go. Oh, I'll, I'll go if you insist on going. Well, I'd really rather you didn't. Why? Well, what if they should still be out there? I'll pick up a club and go for them. Same as you. Oh. Oh. 7.30. Mm, Ken? Ken, wake up. What? Oh. Did you set the radio clock for 7.30? Yeah, I want to get an early start. Oh, oh, I forgot. You still want to go out there, huh? The time is 7.32 on a miserable Sunday morning. Heavy snow warnings are out throughout the area. Motorists are advised to stay off the highways if possible. An accumulation of 5 to 8 inches of snow is predicted. The temperature right now is 18 degrees, and it won't get out of the 20s all day. Cloudy and cold tomorrow with a strong possibility of continuing snow. So if you're in bed, stay there. If you're not, go on back. Well, so much for driving out to Shadow Lake. I've driven in snow before. Well, you're still not thinking about going, are you? Didn't you hear what the man just said? Yeah, he said it's snowing. Five to eight inches. Oh, it never snows as much as they say it's going to. I've got studded snow tires. Even got chains in the trunk if I need them. Ken, why are you so determined? It, it, it's way out of proportion. Can't you see that? Well, I told you, you don't have to go. Well, actually, what you told me was you'd rather I didn't go. No? I'll go. Ken, come on. Enough is enough. Let's turn back. I can't even see where we're going. That's all right, as long as I can. Now, just be still and let me drive. get as far as Gibbsville, the last civilized outpost before the lake. Now look at it, Ken. It's practically buried under now, and the snow's coming down harder than ever. Now will you be sensible for once in your life, and, and, and let's turn around. I want to stop at Potts Grocery. Why, for heaven's sake? I want sake? to pick up a few things. Is that the store? Doesn't look the same as in the summer. Nothing does. What do you want to buy, anyway? Well... If it's really going to keep on snowing like this, we might be stuck at the cottage overnight. In that case... Oh, Ken. Well, if it should, we should have to stay over, we'd better load up on food. Ken, I don't want to spend the night out there. We'll freeze. That's a summer cottage. We can't spend the night out there. Sure, we can. We've got the fireplace. It'll keep the living room comfortable enough. We have to sleep over. There are plenty of blankets. And what are you going to burn? The furniture? For heaven's sake, Martha. There's a good half quart of firewood in the utility room. There is? Noticed it. How often do you go into the utility room when we're out there in the summertime? Well, it's the same. Come on, come on. Let's let's get those groceries. The roads up ahead aren't getting any better, and we sit here arguing. You know, I I still can't understand how I could spend practically a whole summer in that cottage and never notice all that firewood. I guess you're just not very observant. Been there since the middle of last winter. Go ahead. Howdy, Mr. Harris. Hi. Mr. Harris. I'm surprised to see you folks out this way, weather carrying on like it is. What can I do for you? 
Well, we want a box load of provisions, just in case we have to stay overnight at the cottage. Martha, you know what we'll need better than I do. Well, just take one of those baskets, Miss Harris, and help yourself to whatever catches your fancy. <laughs> 150 degrees below zero and cooking over an open fire. Boy, this is going to be a lot of fun. You better get some candles, too, dear. The cottage, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Stu Ralston was out here last night, and he thinks our place was broken into. I thought I'd better just check it out. Now, you ain't seriously figuring on going all the way out to Shadow Lake in this kind of weather, are you, Mr. Harris? We, yes, I thought we would. Well, ain't none of my affair, of course, but I sure wouldn't if it was me doing it. Not for love or money, I wouldn't. Oh, well, it won't be easy, I suppose, but I want to make sure nothing's been tampered with. Ain't going to let up for a spell. You can count on that. Not that I think for a minute you're going to make it out to Shadow Lake. You don't? Not for a minute. Not up that wagon track to the lake itself. Okay. Well, this ought to hold us. You want to add it up, Mr. Potts? Sure thing. Got everything you need now? Mm, I guess so, yes. All right, let's see. Dollar seventy-six forty-three. If you ask me, I don't think we're going to need any of it. What did Mr. Potts say about going out to the lake? Took a damn view. And you're not going to pay any attention, I suppose. You know something, Martha? You're really getting a little tiresome about this. What? Twelve dollars and ninety-seven cents it comes to, folks. Seems like an almighty lot. We're but... used to it. Let's see, ten. Let's see if I have three ones. One, two, yeah. Here you are. And here's your three cents change. I thank you. Come on, Martha. You take my advice, folks. You'll turn right around and go back. Gonna be a mess up there toward Shadow Lake. Please, Ken. He knows what he's talking about. He's a native. Come on, come on. We may not even be able to turn around if we go much further. I don't intend to turn around. Okay. You wouldn't listen to me or Lupin. So now we're stuck. Stuck sounding like doomsday. I can rock us out of here. The turn off to the cottage up ahead there. Yes, there's the old oak with broken limb. Are you actually going to try to drive up that ruddy little lane to the cottage? Doesn't look good, does it? No, no. I guess I better not try it. Oh, thank goodness. Well, we've had a nice Sunday morning drive. Now I just hope we can get back. Oh, listen, there's plenty of gas in the tank. Are you, uh, you sit here. Keep the motor idling so the heater works and you'll be perfectly comfortable. I'm going to walk back to the cottage. Oh, Lord, give me no, strength. I, I, I've got boots and fleece-lined gloves and a warm coat, and I've got a cap that pulls down over my ears. Now, why shouldn't I walk? Snow up to his armpits, and he wants to know why I shouldn't walk. Oh, what is it? A mile, mile and a quarter? If I can't walk that far, snow or no snow, I'd better give up. Okay, I'm coming with you. Are you out of your mind? Sure, we both are. Well, what are we sitting here for? Let's get going. I... I can't, can I? I just can't. I, I told you that before we started. All right. Do you think you can make it back to the car alone? Oh, are you going ahead to the cottage? Oh, thanks. I, I, I'll make it... Somehow. And please. Don't don't lie down. And this this don't you know better than to lie down in snow now? I have to get I'm so tired. Stay on your feet. Ma Martha. Just just a little no, don't lie down. If I can get this box of groceries, blood, and this tree for Martha, I told you not to lie down. Just, just for a little while. All right. I can carry you if I have to. Can't, can we go back? It's further back to the car now than it is to the cottage. You, you can't. I can't carry you. We could, we could rest a couple of minutes, couldn't we? No. No, if we stop now, we stop for one minute huh? to rest now. We're dead. <laughs> Oh, 
They say it isn't a particularly unpleasant way to die, freezing to death. There's no pain. You simply drift off to sleep and uh, that's all there is to it. Seems to me the only people who can tell you with any authenticity what it's like to die, no matter what way, are the people who have died. And they don't come back to talk about it, do they? I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Ken and Martha Harris would seem to be in enough trouble, just as things are. Martha has collapsed from exhaustion and exposure, and Ken, carrying her the rest of the way to the cottage, is near exhaustion himself. He plods through the nightmare of snow to another nightmare. For what awaits him at the cottage, if he makes it, is far more terrifying than any accumulation of clean white snow. Martha, I can see it. I can see the cottage. Oh, Lord, don't, Martha. Don't go to sleep. We're going to make it. Don't let yourself sleep. Oh, we're here. Look. Here are the steps. So heavy. Why should she be so heavy? Martha. Oh, worst thing. Panic. I'm tired. That's all. The keys. The keys. Martha, do you think you could stand up for a minute while I just get into my pocket? I've got only these two hands, and I have to... Martha, could you just try... Hey, here you are helping. Oh, thank heaven. You're not... Okay, now, just... Oh, we made it. You hear me, Martha? We made it. Oh. Now, just... Just as far as... Just to the rocking chair, remember? You always liked the rocking chair. Uh... Are we, we home? We're, we're in the cottage, Martha. You made it. It's going to be all right. Uh, can I just take a little sleep? No, no, no. Not yet. I have, I've got to start a fire. It'll warm the room up. But until it does, I want you to stay awake. Oh, poor Ken. I can't give you such now, a if, hard time. If, if you just stay awake, everything will be all right. Just don't go to sleep. Going. You're wrapped up in blankets. Everything's going to be all right. Oh, my, my feet are beginning to hurt like anything, Ken. Good sign. Means the circulation's coming back. I'm so tired. Well, it's warm enough now. You to take a nap. I have got to go out for a while. Out? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm all right. My feet don't even feel cold. I'm dressed for it better than you are. I've got to go back and get the box of groceries. Oh, Ken, can't you? Can't we just forget the stupid groceries? Yeah. I, I don't see how you can make it all by yourself back to where you left that car. Well, I've got two. There are three cans of tomato soup in the pantry. Now, that's all. Ken, th th does it look like somebody's been here? Not that I can tell so far. I'll go over everything better when I get back. I, I wish you wouldn't leave. Come on, it's not all that far. Well, the truth is I... I'm scared. Scared? Well, if, if somebody was in here last night, what, what if they came back? In this kind of weather? Forget it. No, I, I guess you're right. Okay. Okay, okay. I better get going. I may be a while. It'll be pretty slow, especially on the way back with that load of groceries. Okay. I feel as though I could sleep for about a week anyway. Good. You just sit there and fall asleep. See you later. Ken... Be careful. I'll be fine. Oh. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> what? Who? Ken? Ken! What the hell are you doing wandering around without even any shoes on? I just... What is it? 
What's the matter? Ken, there's somebody in the cottage right now, right this minute. What makes you think that? I heard them right after you left, a man and a woman. They were laughing. Right after I left? Yeah, I, I, I went to sleep. I couldn't have been more than a minute, and they woke me up with their laughing. Well, you must have dreamed it. No, absolutely not. I was not dreaming. The laughing woke me up, and they, they kept on for a while. For a while after I was awake. Can I know I was awake? And then, then when I called out, they stopped. What, did you look for them? No, I, 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 I couldn't. I was scared. Okay, I'll go check it out. Just let me get this carton out to the kitchen. It weighs a ton. Well, I, I'll come with you while you look for them. All right. The feet still hurt? Some, but not as much as they did. I, I can walk all right. Okay, okay. I want to check out on the utility room first. Well, you were in there when you got the firewood, weren't you? No, so, I'll look again. You just stay here, just outside the door. No, I I'm coming in with you. Will you stop that? Just once, will you do as I say without giving me an argument? <sighs> all right. Just outside the door here. Just until I've had a look around. I said all right. Well, nothing's been disturbed in here. No, everything's normal in the utility room, as far as I can tell. Well, what was all that stamping you were doing? Oh, some, some, just some snow I had left on my boots. Could you tell where the laughing was coming from? I mean, what direction? No, no, not really. It sounded like from kind of all around. All around, okay. Let's let's check the bedroom. Actually, it was it was sort of odd. It it, it seemed to come from farther away than in the house. Silly, of course, but. No, it had to be in the house. It could be a skating party from Gibbsville or somewhere. The lake must be frozen over. It came from inside the cottage. Well, you can see there's nobody in the bedroom. Where would it have come from? You were in the living room. There's nobody in the kitchen, the utility room, or the bedroom. Now, that's all the rooms we have, Martha. I didn't dream it. Oh, Ken. Good Lord, no. I've had three, not to mention about a pound of French fries and two-thirds of that big can of baked beans. For a lady who doesn't know how to cook over an open fire, you whip up a pretty solid meal. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It would be kind of cozy, wouldn't it, with only the lamp and the firelight? Except that... Except that what? I didn't dream that laughing, Ken. There was someone in here. You want to know what I think? I think you and Stu were both dreaming about last night and about today. Now, I've been over this place with a fine tooth comb. There couldn't have been anybody in here. No locks were broken. There's not so much as a chair out of place. Everything is exactly the way we left it last fall. Well, I don't know about Stu. I didn't dream it. There's nobody but us in the house now. At least we know that. And I've got a full belly. And the fire makes the room nice and cozy. You know, Ken, I'm worried about Stu. He's so... He seems so lost without Claudia. Yeah. I feel sorry for him, too. But he's not the first guy whose wife walked out on him. No, that's just it. He can't believe she did. I mean, he can't believe she would without at least telling him she was going. Yeah, well, she didn't tell him, did she? What more proof does he want? <laughs> You've got it just backwards from his thinking. He thinks her not telling him is proof that something happened to her. Yeah, yeah. He also sees people in other people's cottages. Hey, I just had an idea. We left the Scrabble board out here, didn't we? We're up, up on the shelf in the bedroom closet. How about a game of Scrabble? Mm, I don't know. I... Oh. Okay, if I can keep my mind on it. Give me a chance to beat you for once. I'll go get it. And Martha, mm -hmm. if you say you want to come with me, so help me, I'll clobber you. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll sit right here. I won't budge. I'm pretty sure I left it in there up on the closet shelf. I won't be a second. Don't hurry. I won't be going anywhere. It's no good, I tell you. I can't do it. What did you say, Ken? I didn't say anything. Can't do it? 
or won't do it. All right, won't, if you like it better that way. We'll see about that. Ken! Ken! What? What's the matter? What happened? Ken, I heard them again. They, they were talking this time. Didn't you hear them? I didn't hear a sound. You, you mean the people you thought you heard laughing before? I did hear them. But they were talking this time. He said he couldn't do something and... Ken, where are they? Well, I, I'm afraid they're just in your head, Martha. Oh, no, you don't. Just because you didn't hear them, you're not going to make me out to be off my rocker. Come on, come on, Martha. You're nervous, you're upset, and who wouldn't be? So am I. Okay, let's, let's play one game of Scrabble and get to bed. I piled enough blankets on that bed to smother us, never mind keep us warm. All right. But I heard them. They've got to be here somewhere. Ken? Ken, wake up. Ken, come on, will you wake up? Mm -hmm. What? What? What's the, what is it, Martha? Look. At what? Can't you see it? The flickering? The fireplace in the living room is burning. Oh. Well, it's probably just part of a log that wasn't all the way burned up. Smoldered for a while and then then caught again. Go to sleep, Martha. No, that's a fire, a whole fire. We couldn't see an ember or something from clear back here. What are you doing? I'm going in there to see what's going on. A fire like that just doesn't build itself out of ashes. Somebody built it. Don't you want to catch them? All right. Now, don't talk. We'll just sneak up to the living room door and see what's going on, okay? Okay, okay. Did you hear something? Not a damn thing. Now, don't talk anymore. Just let me get a look through the door and... She's come back. It, it, it's Claudia. Thank God. It's Claudia. Shh, be quiet. I hear you. I don't think so, Martha. I don't think they can hear us. It's not as if I dragged you or something. You might as well have. You knew I didn't want to come. It can't be. It can't. That man looks like you. Yes. Apparently it can be, Martha. Ken Harris stands beside his wife, watching a scene in which he, he, Ken Harris, sits in front of the fireplace talking to Claudia Ralston. That adds up to two Ken Harrises in the same house at the same time. Impossible? Well, very unlikely, except that there it is. And Claudia, the long-absent Claudia, is she real? We'll find out when I return shortly with Act Three. It is held by some that events of great dramatic impact may leave their imprint so deeply stamped upon the scene of their occurrence that it is never totally erased, not by the absence of the participants, nor by the passage of time. Perhaps this is what we're witnessing here in the living room of the Harris's summer cottage. Perhaps something is about to happen which has happened before and left its indelible mark on Shadow Lake. Ken. How could it be you? You're standing right here beside me, and yet you're sitting there in the living room talking to Claudia. I, I, I don't see how it could be. It's something beyond our understanding. They're not really here, Martha. I mean, not really in this place at this time. I, I don't understand it either. I just, I just want to get away from it. She's talking again. It isn't easy for me either, Ken. Not one bit easier than it is for you. I told you in the beginning, 
weekends are out. I hate lying to Martha. You know that. So we steal a weekday when we can. We come out here and have a cold, miserable afternoon and a short evening together and then go back to the city and wait for our next chance to sneak away. We said in the beginning, and you agreed that... I know what we said in the beginning. I can't stand this hole in the corner business much longer. That was all it was ever meant to be. We should never let it start. Well, we did let it start. You can't undo that. And now it's not enough. It's too much. I think we have to stop now. It's gone much further than we meant it to. They... They just... Faded away. They're gone. They were never here, Martha. They weren't real. And the fire is dead. And everything... Is just... Gone. It was... I don't know. Some, some kind of... Illusion. We imagined it. It was something that happened before, wasn't it? Something that actually happened. You and Claudia out here together. Martha, if you're just... Which weekend was it, Ken? The time you had to go to Chicago to close that deal with whoever it was that time? That's enough. We're going to get dressed and get the hell out of this place before it drives us both nuts. Now... We're... No. No, we're not. We're staying right here. But, Martha... I'm scared. But I have a feeling they'll be back. And I'm staying till the end. All right. If you want to see the end, we'll stay. You'll be sorry, but we'll stay. <laughs> Hi, Mabel. This is Lou Potts. Hello, Lou. What in the world are you doing up this time of night? Oh, inventory. Have to do it sooner or later, and I wasn't anxious to leave the store in this kind of weather. Oh, ain't it awful? Still snowing, looks like, out the window. Yep, still snowing. What can I do for you? Do you happen to know, is the sheriff still in his office, or did he close up and go home? In his office five, ten minutes ago. Why? Want me to ring him? No, I just thought if it... Turns out he's still in his office. Maybe I'd stop by and say hello. Some kind of trouble going on, Lou? <laughs> Wouldn't you know it before I did if there was? Lou, what are you doing out on a night like this, for Pete's sake? Oh, got something bothering me. I guess it's cold out there. It happens every winter, seems like. How come you're still around this late at night? Mm, waiting for folks like you to show up. Got something bothering them. Well, what is it you got on your mind? Well, you remember the Harris's? Got a summer place up there by the lake? Harris? Harris. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> Pretty little thing she is. Well, they stopped in at the store this afternoon and filled up with a box of provisions to take out to the cottage with them. Today? I told them I'd near in so many words they was damn fools. I've been watching all day, waiting for them to come, and I ain't seen them. I would have, too, if they drove past. I must be stuck up there. Yeah, well, I guess there's nothing for it, but uh, I go on up there and see, or try to. I knew it, Ken. They're coming back. I knew they would. We shouldn't be here. We should have gone away. Shh, be quiet. You want us to stop seeing each other. You've had your fun and now you're ready to go back to Martha, is that it? We agreed in the very beginning that it would have to end this way, Claudia. And I may have agreed to that at the start, or seemed to. But I won't have it that way now. I don't really see that you have much choice. <laughs> you don't. No. I love Martha, Claudia. This was never more than just a... Just... A little affair. Is that what you mean? A little fun. Something you could... Toss aside whenever you got tired of it. Claudia, we both agreed... Oh, you and we're both agreed. I, I don't give a damn what I agreed to. All right. What do you want from me? I want you to tell Martha tomorrow that you want a divorce. That's simple enough, isn't it? And if she 
she asks you why, you tell her. I won't do any such thing. You know that, Claudia. Do you want a bet? I won't. All right, then. I'll tell her myself. Her and Stu both. Let them do the divorcing. And don't you think they won't? <laughs> I only hope Stu doesn't blow your brains out. You're not going to do that, Claudia. Do you think you can stop me? Yes. I think I can. You're not a very nice person, really. Yes, I'm quite sure I can stop you. They've faded away again. Just faded away as, as if they were nothing but air. Less than air, Martha. They're nothing at all. They're a memory. Okay, you've seen the end of it. Now, will you come away with me? Oh, no. That wasn't the end of anything, Ken, and you know it. Martha, I told her I love you. You heard me tell her that. Oh, yes, sure. After you... After you and she Martha, had... don't. Please, don't. Don't what? Cry? Not for a million dollars. I want us to leave this place now. You go if you like. I'm staying for the end. Well, they must have made it as far as the turnoff anyway. I ain't seen hide and hair of the car. Oh, there it is. Yep, up ahead there. That heap of snow? Yeah, it must be. Stop just this side of turn off to the lake. I sure hope they had enough gas to keep the heater going. Else they're frozen to death by now. Yeah. Well, don't look like there's anybody in the car, Lou. I guess I'll just have to walk on up there myself. Why, you're as crazy as they are, Al. Yeah. Yep. Now you sit here and stay warm, Lou. I got snowshoes in the trunk. Son of a gun. Now, who'd think of snowshoes? A night like this, a sheriff would. Don't know why I didn't open a grocery store instead of running for sheriff. It's weird. The way they, they, they just materialize. It isn't real. Why are you looking at me like that, Ken? If you have anything silly in your mind, you can just forget it. Silly? Just don't look at me that way. What way, Claudia? As if you could... Almost as if you could kill me. I wouldn't, of course, if there were any other way. But there isn't. <laughs> Come on, Ken. You're, you're kidding. I won't have you telling Martha about you and me. I won't put her through a thing like that. If I have to kill you to prevent it, why then... Okay. And I... I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize you felt so strongly about it. We'll, we'll just forget the whole thing, okay? Well, don't just sit there shaking your head at me. I won't say a word to Martha... Or to stew either about us, Ken. I promise you. I don't believe you. But that's just the point, Ken. I'm telling you, you can believe me. I promise. A moment ago, you said you don't give a damn what you promised. That was just... Oh, you know it was just talk. Oh, Ken, you've got, you've got to believe me. I can't. But if you don't... And she disappeared. You killed her. 
Yes. I couldn't figure anything else to do. But... Oh, God. A murderer. Martha, don't say that. A daughter and murderer. What did you do with her? What did you do with... with her body? I tore some boards off the floor of the utility room and buried her under there. The utility room? You mean she's under there now, under that floor right this minute? Yes. All last summer, every weekend, all last summer, we were out here laughing and having fun, and she... I wasn't having much fun. So, what do we do now? I go to the sheriff's office and give myself up. You intend to confess? What else is there to do? I'm glad it's over. I... I don't think I can walk to the car. I'll carry you. We can make it. There's nobody else who knows about this, is there? Just me. Nobody else even suspects. I, it doesn't matter. I told you I'm going to give myself up. I know what you told me. It would be so easy. What would be easy? You carry me part of the way. Far enough so I can't get back and then just leave me in the snow to die. The way you might have done yesterday. Martha. You're a murderer. You killed Claudia to save yourself. Why not me? I wouldn't. Martha, you know I wouldn't. Well, there's only one way to find out for sure, isn't there? Let's go. Ken Harris does not know that the sheriff is making his way toward the cottage. But the going is slow. It will be some time before the two meet. If Ken chooses to leave his wife to die of exposure, he can do it and get away with it. But will he? You may have it either way you want it or can believe it. murderer, granted, has either been exposed for what he is or has been prodded to the brink of a further and even more despicable crime. And the force that brought him to this plight was supernatural, according to our present standards of what is and what is not natural. Could it be that there is a department of criminal investigation operating on a level not yet recognized by our very exact sciences? Our cast included Joan Lovejoy, Nat Poland, Joan Loring, Bob Caliban, and Robert Maxwell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Lord, will the old goat never die? The bishop... He's dead. He asked for you at the last. Did you hear me, Carl? I hear you. Of course I did. And now, by heaven, you're going to hear me. Asked for me, did he? That slavering old hypocrite. Carl! <laughs> How could... He, he could no more stand the sight of me than I of him. But now he's gone and there's nothing to stop me. The estate is mine. The money is mine. Now I can rock the rafters, the seven deadly sins, the Ten Commandments. I'm going to commit all the first, and I'll break all the second. Oh, 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 oh I'm going to cut such a swath, the devil himself will envy me. 
The Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Uncle Ben's Long Grain and Wild Rice and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>